Hello, everybody. This is Tiffany with the Speak Up and Inspire series. And I had to take a last minute trip out for school shopping for the twins. They are starting middle school tomorrow. Middle school. Oh my God. I'm so scared. They are starting middle school tomorrow. I'm going to have two big sixth graders. They are going to be starting middle school tomorrow. So I had to go out. Um, do some last minute stuff. So we are doing the Speak Up and Inspire series on the move. Um, I am on my way home. Um, so we are going to be doing it here right now in the car. <laughs> um, and we're going to get this party started here in just a second. Um, this month, we are going to be um, interviewing uh, teachers inspirational teachers that are also doing great things in the community. So tonight we're going to be talking to the beautiful Miss Renee Herndon. And then next week we are going to be talking to Mr. Delvon Harling um, from Columbia, South Carolina. And then we will be talking to Miss Catherine Few. So all month we are going to be talking to um, great teachers in the community that are going to be teaching your children, um, starting off one class at a time, inspiring our kids um, in the school system. Um, all of our teachers have been teachers for a very long time, and so I'm excited to have them on the Speak Up and Inspire series to tell us about their journey as a teacher, but also what it is that keeps them going as teachers. Being a teacher is not easy. Um, I was a teacher for six years off and on, um, and it's not easy. It is definitely not easy being a teacher. So we are gonna be talking to teachers all month, um, starting with Miss Raven, and then this week we will be talking to Mr. Delvon from Columbia, and our following weekend, and our last weekend, we are gonna be talking to Miss Catherine Few. So please take a time, get comfortable, Join us like you've been joining us every Monday at 8 o'clock. Um, I do have some really good news for you. Um, starting in the next couple of weeks, we are going to be doing another episode or another podcast spinoff of the Speaking Up and Inspire series. It is going to be Friday Live with me, Tiffany, on Fridays. We're going to be doing it in the morning. Um, and it is going to be highlighting any upcoming, excuse me, any upcoming events that are going on, as well as anything that's going on in the community that um, is important or that is a big deal or is going on between my friends and my family and my and the networks. So that will be Friday Live. I have not. Um, decided on a date that I am going to start it. So you are just going to have to continue listening in for the new Friday Life Friday Live spinoff of the Speak Up and Inspire series, which we will be doing in the next couple of weeks. I am talking to promoters right now, getting everybody on board so that they can start sharing their events with me. And I will be talking about upcoming events, anything that's going on in, in the community of importance um, and I will be looking for you to help me out with those events and telling me and tagging me in your events your flyers your promos your marketing to tell me about your events as well as mm -mm, going back to whatever guests that we have on the speak up and inspire series so that you are truly being supported throughout the month that you have appeared on the speak up and inspire series so just a little something to let you know about i'll be keeping you updated um, if you are a promoter or an event planner a community leader or anyone who just loves to promote events and um, you have the, the plug make sure you check me out um, I have a group that I just started. It's called SUIS Friday Live, which stands for Speak Up and Inspire Series. So SUIS Friday Live. I just started a group today for any promoters, event planners, anyone who uh, frequents various um, community events going on. If you know someone that's a promoter and you follow them pretty closely, any events that you want for me to shout out on the Speak Up and Inspire series and on the Friday Live, please tag me 
and also find the group and join the group. I will make sure that I share the link. Excuse me. I will make sure that I show the link in the comments so that you can find the group for you to drop all of your events, all of your community affairs that you have going on. And if there's anything of importance that you feel that needs to be told to our networks, then please tag me in them, send them to my messenger, or send them to us via the Speak Up and Inspire um, page. So there you go. That's what's going on with me. So Miss Raven is going to be joining us. She is a teacher doing great things in the community. She was referred to me by Jonathan Coleman, who I interviewed last month on the Speak Up and Inspire series. Um, he is a promoter himself. Um, he does marketing for startup businesses and established businesses. Um, and he is an awesome, awesome, awesome friend of mine. And he is also a really big promoter of black owned businesses. He referred Renee to me, so I know that she is awesome. And so we are going to head and plug her in so that we can go ahead and start our interview with her. Let's see, uh, is she there yet? Nope. All right, I'm checking to see if she's here. Uh, I do not see her yet. Okay, so I'm just waiting for her to join us. And once she joins us, then we will go ahead and start our interview with her. So thank you everybody that has joined. Brandon, hello, Antonio. Hi Dee, how are you doing? I miss your face. Hello Ron, hello Deshaun. Hello, Dell. Appreciate you supporting me every single week. I appreciate that. Hello, uh, Yvette. Hello, Jonathan. Thank you for the referral to Miss Raven. We are trying to get her on with us now. Hello, Mindy. Thank you. You have been um, joining us every week now. I appreciate you following us and listening in every Monday. Hello, Miss Winifred. Hello, Max. Hello, Miss Ismani. Hello, beautiful. Hello, Barbara. How are you doing? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. All right. So we are waiting for Miss Raven right now to join us. Jonathan, if you could do me a favor, if you could send her a message and let her know that I'm waiting for her to join us, that would be so nice so that I don't mess up this live. So one thing I would like you to do while we are waiting for Miss Raven to join us. Oh, there she is. Hi, Raven. Hello, Miss Raven. So she has joined us. So Raven is online with us now. So I'm going to go ahead and send her an invite so that she can join us. And we can start to learn a little about Miss Raven and what she's doing in the community and her as a teacher. So Miss Raven, I'm going to go ahead and send you an invite right now. You should be seeing it coming soon. shout you out because you're always supporting me and I appreciate that. Um, it looks like I am trying to wait, get a turn in here to add her because so many of y'all are supporting me and you're watching right now that I'm waiting for her to come in queue for me to add her. So it looks like, uh-oh, almost there. All right, so Raven, for some reason, I am not able to add you. So make sure that you do not have any security measures um, on your Facebook so that I can add you because for some reason I am not able to right now. So while we are waiting for um, for Raven to join us and for us to get her coming on here, I have Dell that is watching right now. Um, he is going to be on the Speak Up and Inspire series next week. But right now, while you can, type in the comments, who in your memory was your favorite teacher? I would love to hear it. Type in the comments, who was your favorite teacher and what school did they teach in? So shout them out. Let's hear it. All right, Raven, for 
for some reason, I am not able to send you um, an invoice. Uh oh, there you go. There you go. I might be able to now. Hold on. Okay, so Raven, I think you have, I don't know, a block or something on your, um, maybe in your settings because I am not able to add you for some reason. Oh, there we go. There we go. I'm able to add you now. Here she comes. Here she comes. Now. Hold on. Can you see me now? Hey, Raven. How are you? I think you have Hold on. Know, a block or something. On Can you your, hear me? Because um, I had to switch to mobile, which is what was taking so long. Can you see me? <laughs> yes, I can see you. How are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing good. As you can good. see, I'm in my car. I had to do some last minute school shopping for the I twins. Heard. <laughs> this is the day. Yes, yeah, so how are you doing? <laughs> this is that Love day. <laughs> I am actually commemorating my last day of the summer as well because my go time will be tomorrow also. So um, I am taking a break from preparations to come and talk to you. Um, I'm glad you can't see my desk in front of me because it looks absolutely <laughs> horrid. <laughs> but so right, I'm absolutely so with you. Okay, so you're ready for school. So you're actually going to, your class is No, is I'm ready so summer. not ready. So I'm so not ready. So let's do that. <laughs> Let's okay. tell truth. Let's tell truth here. Let's start the school year out correctly. I'm not. Okay. <laughs> and that's actually right. okay because I feel like I'm I'm kind of one of those people though that will go around and around thinking about things over and over and over and over again. So sometimes mm -hmm. I need those hard deadlines to kind of be like stop. Go. Gotcha. So gotcha. I'll be stopping and going tomorrow. But yeah, okay. so 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 I'm glad you can't see this though. I purposely turned okay. the camera this way. Okay, sounds good. So, so I know that um, as a teacher myself, we have those maybe that week before school actually starts to get our classrooms ready. So is that what's starting tomorrow for you? Or you officially oh. start teaching tomorrow? Oh, no, no, no. So I've decided to be superwoman. And because okay. I had to take I had to take an unexpected uh, kind of medical leave this um, summer. So what I'll be actually starting tomorrow is a boot camp with some of my private clients where I'll be oh. transitioning them. Oh, yeah. I'm, I just wrote a curriculum where I'm going to be transitioning some of my second and third graders into the next school year. So I'll be I've made individualized plans for them. Um, to get okay. them getting getting back into the kind of uh, reality of school, so I'm okay. gonna check in. I'm gonna check in with them, see what they retained from last year. We're gonna utilize some of their summer experiences to um, get material for their literacy and ELA, which is kind of like my specialty. Um, okay. And then we're gonna we're gonna check in with um, some of their um, math scores because you know here in North Carolina third, fourth, and fifth graders have those end of year, end of grade things. Yeah. So we have to make sure that they're ready for those things. Starting now is absolutely essential. And I think a lot of parents forget that. Um, you can start in the fall, fall semester, early and often mm -hmm. with interventions to help the kids get right. what they need to get for end of year. So um, I'm actually going to be running a boot camp, a transition camp for the next two weeks, which is gonna lead right into the school year. So that's what I'll be doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. All right. So what city are you in? Because you're in North Carolina. So what city are you in? Right. I'm in, North, I'm, I'm in Durham. You're in Durham. So I'm a, okay. I'm representing Bull City right now. <laughs> okay. All right. I, nice. Nice. And I think you're up the road for me in Charlotte, right? Yes. I'm in Charlotte. So the twins are starting middle school. This is their first year of middle school. I've heard. And mommy is there. <laughs> I am not looking forward to it. <laughs> Do I need to call you tomorrow for support? Yes, you're probably yeah. going to need to call me tomorrow for support. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Overstood, overstood. <laughs> All right, so let's get right into it. What grade yeah. do you teach? So my clients actually are from um, the span. So I get third graders. Third graders is kind of my uh, sweet spot right now. Um, but I also have worked with fourth and fifth graders, and I've worked all the way up to eighth grade. 
um, prior to coming down here into North Carolina, I actually was teaching the big kids in college. Um, so oh, okay. I had to, oh yeah, so I had to learn how to switch gears when I got down here and some of my wonderful collegiate friends were not hiring me. So, <laughs> so we had to switch gears and start learning how to teach the little, little ones. And that's kind of how I got here to start teaching school age. So I've been going back and doing trainings and whatnot to get more prepared and um, better skills on how to um, work with that um, age range. Um, because like I said, I kind of thought I was going to build my career before I'm down here in academia. Okay. So. Okay, so you went from teaching college students to teaching elementary students. That happened. <laughs> that absolutely happened. <laughs> I oh my that. goodness, that's a, that's a big leap. <laughs> Which surprisingly, both surprisingly, some of the techniques that you use are the mm -hmm. same. Are the same. Right. So, yeah. It's, yeah. It, so it wasn't too far of a jump, but definitely I'll say the systems within and how okay. you have to navigate is definitely right. different because academia is, you know, different than um, navigating like a school system or a school district. Or mm -hmm. even if you're working, like if you're working with um, a company and you're contracting, so that is different. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that the business side is probably um, some of where the, the learning was the most of a jump for me and having to learn how to do that. But the actual right. practices, the actual practices weren't too, too, too um, polar opposite, if that makes sense. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So you are doing this boot camp. Tell us a little bit more about your boot camp and mm -hmm. what, what was the, the reason behind it? So the reason behind it was that, again, um, a lot of parents, I think, we wait too long. We wait too long. Now it's an issue. Crap, help me. When I really wish that parents would be aware of early and often, early and often, the quicker we can get a student interventions, and get them the proper accommodations if that's needed, um, the proper testing if that's needed, the quicker that we can get those things in place and set okay. and get the players who need to be on board on board, the better we're going to be able to get the outcomes for your student to be basically. So um, the end of last year, I actually had a contract with um, the Orange County School District, where I was per like that, I specifically was getting their third, fourth, and fifth graders ready for end of year. I came in in the okay. middle of April. Okay. I could do so much more, so much more if you called me in March. <laughs> so what basically what this exactly. boot camp just and I know I, we're laughing because we're because we know, and so yeah. uh -huh. what this boot camp is is what I'm focusing on right now. Um, it's kind of making individualized plans for students that I've already worked with. Um, so they've okay. already been clients that I've, that I've kind of retained. And we're going and going, okay, so what did you learn? What do you, what do we remember from last year? And, mm -hmm. and then not only that, but also just getting their rigor back, right? So I'm, right. I don't know what they've been doing over the summer. So this is Miss Raven's check-in to see what have you been doing over the summer? And then in my little snazzy mind, and I have to take those those things that they've been doing, and how do I academe those so that I can test their um, their retention, their um, reading skills? I had some clients that, even though they increased their reading levels during the school year, they still were not on level. So we're even still trying to get you know to wear those students to getting on level. Um, I'm still working with um, students who have um, IEPs or five um, um, five hundred fours in place. Right, mm -hmm. so I'm working with that. So there's a lot of things that are incorporated into the boot camp. Um, there are some baseline things that go across the board, but then of course most of the stuff is very personalized. So um, a lot of it, a lot of it is um, okay. You were leaving, you were reading at this level. How do I get you to the next level? And how can okay. I do that? How can I get you starting to think about school in such a way? where now you're not shocked all of a sudden when you walked in, walk in and now you have a math problem in front of you. So especially right. for my students who are going from second to third grade, as a lot of folks may or may not know, third grade is when mathematical concepts start incorporating um, more words. So mm -hmm. if I already, so if you already have an issue or you're already behind or lagging with your reading skills from second grade, 
I'm going to try to get you more on point with your reading skills so that now all of a sudden you're not behind in just ELA and math. Now you're going to be right on point, if that makes sense. Okay. okay. That makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. So I'll be doing a, you said it does make sense? Yes, it does, definitely. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I'll be doing a lot of that during um, this boot camp. Um, and then also still trying to make it a little fun. So this is the time where I can also um, make allowances for transitions, right? So for once, for one of my students, I'll be doing instruction for an hour. And then I'll be doing, taking kind of like the next hour where we'll be kind of transitioning where I can say, okay, so what are we feeling like today? Want to do an arts and crafts? Let's do arts and crafts. Want to do okay. some meditation? Let's do some meditation. Let's, let's do some mindfulness and then get yeah. back into the actual rigor of um, the actual academics. So I can have a little bit more play with how strict I can be on time, if that makes sense. Um, yes. Whereas during the, on the, in the school year, it's okay, Miss Raven, let's go. You know what I mean? And I kind of and I get that and I kind of get that way. And I have to I, I I do my own trainings so that I can okay. be the best educator that I can be. But right now, I'm able to kind of offer that um, a little bit more of some leeway in terms of transitioning too. So that's what this boot camp is going to do for the next two weeks. And it gets them more reacclimated to me as well, because now they're going to be sitting in and in, in working with Ms. Raymond weekly. And that's going to yeah. look a little bit different when the school year starts. You know what I'm saying? So. Right. Right. Good deal. Yeah, I know um, the last two years, well, no, the last three years, it's out for the summer break. I've always had like a packet that I put together for the twins for them to do during their summer break so that they don't lose what they just, you know, what they just right. learned. And then to kind of keep their minds going because to me, summer break should not be all about fun and play you still need to have some kind of Absolutely. reading and math and still working your mind instead of taking a whole break. Cause then you lose what you just learned and then you go into the next grade and you've lost all some facts. of the principles that you learned. If you, you, know, if you don't, you lose it. <laughs> yeah. All facts, all facts. Yeah. So yeah. I appreciate yeah. parents. Yeah. Um, all, all of um, my parents, a lot of my parents, um, have provided probably some type of treatment, academic mm -hmm. treatment over the summer, but some some parents right. don't. Some of it is right. about summer camp. And or we also have to realize that some people don't have the same resources. So some parents don't have access to the summer camps. Some people, some, you know what I mean? Um, the coping camps, the et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, this is the opportunity for them to kind of get back into that with me, right. which I'm really thankful about and grateful about, so. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so tell us, how many years mm -hmm. have you been teaching? So I taught at the collegiate level for four years. Okay. And then I taught at, um, I've been teaching down here in North Carolina for five years at the school age level. Okay. So it's about okay. nine years. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, say that again, Tiffany. I said, where did you graduate from? So we can go oh, ahead and represent honey. that. <laughs> Lord, honey, I am, I'm a New Yorker all the way. So I have been, okay. I'm a product, I'm a product of the SUNY system. SUNY is the State University of New York um, system. My first okay. undergrad nice. was an all, was an all women's college. So I actually went to an all women's college in upstate New York first. And then okay. from there, st went into the SUNY system and stayed there, um, and and literally almost connected all the corners of North of uh, New York. So I, I've gone up, I've gone south, I've gone, <laughs> I've gone east and west, literally as far east and west as you can go. My grad okay. school is Buffalo State Bengals. Let's go. Um, let's see. And then my first job was almost literally a half an hour away from the Pennsylvania um, border. So okay. I literally locked it all up. I literally did a star gotcha. on, <laughs> on New York before gotcha. I got down here. 
So yeah, shout out SUNY system. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was gonna be my next question. Where are you from? Because I can hear it. You're not from North Carolina. I can hear yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> no, no. And and the thing about it is, I can't even hide it anymore. Especially when uh -huh. I get excited, or especially when right. I get um, any type of heightened emotion, it's gonna come out. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same when it comes to and I can't hide it, especially when I get going and get hyped up, it's going to come out. <laughs> done, done and over with. So I've stopped yeah. trying to even kind of, um, you know, hide those kind of parts of us. We just kind of, you know, be as genuine as we possibly can. And and usually people, because this, this is such a, because this is such a transplant state, I, I guess I can say. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't yeah. aware of that. I wasn't aware of that. This is such a transplant um, plant state that, you know, people just kind of go, you, you're not from here. You're right. not from here. And I'm well, like, yeah. I get that all the time. I get that Facts. all the time. Facts. Got it. Got it. Okay. So what inspired you to be a teacher? So I fell into this profession very, I fell into it. You know, okay. I, <laughs> I thought I was going to be the next, um, I'm not going to say Oprah, but I thought I was going to be like the next um, journalist. I actually did like a, okay. a, a year at American University um, down in D.C. Um, networking there and working in um, radio. So I thought I was mm -hmm. going to be in radio. I thought I was going to work in radio okay. for my life. Um, and um, somehow found what happened. Oh, I was in college. Hmm, I was in my first undergrad. I didn't uh -huh. Hmm. I didn't have the best experience in my undergrad um, when it came to certain um, aspects of like navigating um, college and, you know, uh, the, the correct studies and the correct classes to take and uh -huh. ensuring ensuring that, you know, I was on the right path to do um, the next step. You know what I'm saying? So I ended up kind of picking a major. I picked a major that... Um, I had to, I kind of had to pick it. Like you have to pick something, you have to pick this so I can put you in the right track. And I'm just like, okay, but I thought I was going to do communications. Didn't happen. So um, I actually was a sociology major and did communication studies as a minor. And okay. then left there, left there and was like, I want my communications degree. So that's why I ended up going back to SUNY. And I went to SUNY Oswego because they had one of the best broadcasting um, programs for an upstate SUNY school. So granted, this is not downstate, this is not CUNY, not the, not the city of New York, because there are okay. two separate systems. Um, and because my, my parents were absolutely against me going to the city, that was not going to happen. So I went up there um, and, you know, got my own radio show, um, worked my way on to be on the e-board, the student e-board there, and was like, okay, this is really cool. But then I mm -hmm. met, I met, my hall director i met two hall directors actually and i'm like well wait a minute how do i do what you do okay and so they're like they're like oh okay well you know we got we got into it this way but i came in right as the field was changing so that okay. was a student affair, that was a student affairs higher education field and so what i mean by it was changing was that you know you could go you could go in back you know mm -hmm. back in the early 2000s and get like a hall director position and work your way up to being like mm -hmm. the director of res life, um, work your way up, do other different studies, become a dean of something, right? Mm -hmm. So I had these really integral folks kind of come and help me and steer me when I was in that second undergrad. Um, they kind of steered me to, um, and I was like, well, how do I do what you do? And so they would tell me. And then I would be like, okay, well, now it seems like the requirements are changing. So now it seems like I have to go back to school to get a master's degree. And okay. so I was like, okay, I'll have to go back. And I kept putting it off. I kept putting it off. I graduated again. I was working in radio some more. I'm like, I'm fine. I had a job working completely, not even affiliated with education. It was in an emergency medical center. Um, I was at answering non-urgent 911 calls, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, was like, okay, I, I got to do something. And then mm -hmm. had a really, 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 really bad breakup in all transparency. And him and the new girl moved to our, our hometown. And I'm like, okay, I got to go. So I literally, I applied. No, I literally did. I applied for grad school and was in grad school within four months because I was not playing. I'm like, I got to go. 
So okay. I, no, seriously, the next day, um, after I stopped crying, I, uh, I was online researching um, programs, found the programs that were in upstate that were going to best suit me, wrote all of my, wrote most of what I needed to write that night, had applied to them officially, and then was waiting to get my, um, my, um, my other like references and whatnot in. Got those mm -hmm. in, and as soon as I got those in, I actually drove them over to the schools. So it oh, was wow. two schools. Oh no, I wasn't. When I said I was out, I'm an out. You were not playing at all. Today, today. So yes. I had two school. I had two schools in Buffalo. It was Buff State, and it was Canisius College, and then I had a school in Albany. And okay. It wasn't U Albany. It was I can't remember, but I applied to all of them. Um, Buff State, I actually met all of their, uh, their um, professors while I was over there. I happened to come in in the middle of a conference, and they were all kind of gathered there together, and I introduced mm -hmm. myself, and I'm like, I just want to come to your school, so if you can just make that happen, that would be great. Um, right. And literally the week later, I had an acceptance into grad school. Week after okay. that. So that's how you started your teaching um, yeah. journey. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. Okay. That's right. All right. All right. So, so that was what, long. I, that was long. I'm sorry, but it was kind of oh, low. Oh, no, you're fine. We, we appreciate the journey because, you know, you never know who might be listening in or who might be, you know, who might watch the, the replay this week who wants to become a teacher. So it can right. be a process, especially when you're changing, you're changing majors. Um, I did mm -hmm. that. My that bachelor's is in social work. And I oh. decided that I loved the one-on-one. -on -one. And so I changed from my master's in social work to my master's in mental health counseling. So, um, yeah. And then there's process. that. And then yeah. I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to finish um, an acceptance letter, well, not an acceptance letter. I'm trying to finish um, an admissions letter to NC State for um, a graduate, um, it's a school counselor um, um, uh, program that they are offering because I'm finding that um, as I'm working with families, I'm finding that they there's not enough advocacy for them, and yeah. I'm finding that yeah. sometimes sometimes the personnel in schools don't have the time because of their right. course loads to really sit and offer families what they need in terms of the advocacy and how to walk them through certain processes. Yeah. And so yeah, there you're... is this need for a third party, you know what I mean, to kind of come in and say, hey, this is, you know, how you can navigate this. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, these are the questions to ask um, your school counselor, et cetera, so they can kind of streamline that process by the time they're getting right. into the school, if that makes sense. So um, I'm actually in the process of that and was going to have that done over the summer. Um, but this summer has been very interesting. So I was forced to take some time off, um, which is also important for those of us in this field. Our self care yes. is of yes, utmost, and we don't so and we don't talk about that a lot. Um, you yeah. know, usually we deserve summers for what? For professional development, for sleep. Um, right. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? And so I, I, I literally got knocked down like sit, and so I had to sit. So okay. I sat. <laughs> Nice. So there were nice. some things that I had on my plate to do that I am just kind of getting and reacclimated back into my own little groove too. So, yeah. Okay. In that process. Sounds, that, sounds great. that sounds great. Definitely. So you've been a teacher for nine years. Yeah. Um, you have your master's. You're doing a boot camp. Um, <laughs> get the kids back into, you know, back into the groove of things and mm -hmm. parents too. Mm -hmm. So do you do anything in the community as a teacher, as, as an individual? Do you do anything in the community? So I, um, I do a lot of service. Um, we just had, we just finished having um, a huge weekend um, called Black, Au Black August in the Park, which is the local, um, the local ob observance of the national movement of Black August. I highly okay. encourage folks to go ahead and check that out and fi find okay. out more about Black August and what that's about. Um, and I was... Um, what's called uh i was on their team for volunteering this is my, that this was their fifth year and this was my fifth year of volunteering for that event huge event okay. um so i'm just recovering from that i actually get, i went nowhere yesterday <laughs> <laughs> so i recovered from that 
Um, you will see me usually out um, serving um, with a lot of the local um, community um, organizations around here. Um, mm -hmm. That's one um, facet of what I've um, done here with Black August. Um, uh, I do a lot of community service. I'm actually part of um, an honor society of honor frat now that um, okay. I'm required to do community service, but I was doing my community service prior to being part of that frat. I just joined that frat in spring 16. Okay. Mark. So, so yeah. Can you, tell us, can you tell us a little bit more about Black August? Um, that I'm sure. intrigued. Tell us more about it. You are intrigued. Okay. So um, if you go through and do the historical um, kind of layout of Black August, you'll notice that there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of movements, political movements that happen um, regarding um, Black history that happen in August. Um, okay. The uh, major, um, uh, the major, uh, kind of kickoff to Black August was um, there was a there was an uprising. This is over in this is the West Coast. So there were um, there was a bunch of uh, lockups that were happening with um, a couple, two brothers, and I'm mixed. I'm I'm not going to miscite their names, so I'm not going to say them. But okay. there were um, there was a bunch of uprising. This is happening in the '60s. This is the '70s, um, okay. and um, the Black Panthers were involved in this, but this is not their movement. Um, they okay. were, they actually um, were helping with some of the resistance that was ha happening with, um, there was a riot, there was a prison riot um, over in um, California that kind of brought to the forefront everything that was happening um, with political disrest, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it's mm -hmm. actually a very um, kind of militant time. Um, the four okay. practices, the four um, practices of Black August are to study, to train, to fight, and to resist. And so, um, and that's the national celebration. So that's okay. called Black August, okay? Gotcha. Now, here in Durham, we observe it as Black August in the park. And how Black August is a commemoration of those things that happen um, in August back in the 60s and 70s. Black August in the Park here locally has ended up turning into more of a celebration, which some of the purists mm -hmm. of Black August um, are kind of like, mm, yeah, but that's not really what we're trying to um, draw attention to. So Black August in the Park mm -hmm. is a celebration of um, basically of Blackness. So we provide mm -hmm. a space for mm -hmm. Black people to come. We had social, we had social justice organizations there. Um, uh, okay. One prevalent one is called Spirit House. Um, they yeah. are actively, they are active in um, our Durham community with bringing um, um, awareness to things that are happening inside of jails, especially with Black moms. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. the fight and the plight that they go through, the fact that, you know, we have mothers that are giving birth to children in jail all in handcuffs. Wow. Birth is okay. not a restrictive, <laughs> birth is not a restrictive activity. <laughs> so no, there's, no. there's, there's a lot, there's a lot, but that was just one social justice, justice organization that was there. We also have um, Black Genius um, and the village of, um, I'm saying this wrong, village. Thank you. I said that, Tiffany. Tiffany, did I say Spirit House? Yes, yes. she did. Okay. All right. Um, then we also have, then we also have Black Genius and Protecting the Black Genius. They are kind of, they are the, um, they're, they work with our youth and protecting their um, academic integrity, um, basically just supporting them and advocating for them um, with their Black okay. Genius movement. So they were there. Um, and then there's about, there were about 10 more tables there. But then we also, what I love about this is that we have, um, it supports black vendors. And when I'm specifically for Black August in the park, it supported food vendors. So we had food trucks that were lined up, lined along the um, street, all black. Um, and so you were able to participate in, in that collect, kind of collective economics, which is also a huge component of um, all of this. Um, I'm trying to think too. My brain, of course, is fuzzy because I was wow, working. Wow, you done, you've done um, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Perfect. So that's one Come such. On. That's one such thing that I. Yes, please. Yeah, no, that's that's one thing that I don't do. I don't send people a list of questions. I want it to be very raw. So I definitely don't expect you to be able to 
tell me every single vendor that was there because <laughs> I didn't really give you time but, to come. To be honest. <laughs> but I'm so hard. I'm so hard on myself that um, I should have yeah. known that. I should have been able to write all those things off. Um, no, but you that's gave me one some really good ones. You really did. Because yes. you told me about Go Black ahead. August. You told us about the Black Genius. Um, yes. You told us about a couple of them. So when we um, finish with our interview, if you can just plug some links into I the um, into the comment thread so that people can check it out um, and that they are, you know, going and looking for something that's probably n might not be it. So if you can just yes. share some links in the comments. I will do so. That would be great. And that's how I, we usually share information from their interviews is by putting them in the comments. And then I will take them and share them throughout the week. Done and done. So I will do that. Um, I also participate in this. Um, it was a local of a music festival um, called Art of Cool. I don't know if Art I reached cool? y'all over the mm -hmm, Art of Cool. Okay. Started, started out as a homegrown local jazz festival and turned into a oh. huge national, um, like it. national, like national. <laughs> um, it turned right. into to this huge national um, kind of um, concert series now. Oh, wow. um, it's going to be on year six. Last year was the fifth, um, the fifth anniversary. Um, one of my good friends, Cicely Tyson, was the founder, um, and Al Strong, also another founder. Um, but okay. it, it is now it is now her baby. She's given birth to it, and it is not local anymore. So it's like full syndicated. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so this year's headliner is C I'm sorry, K O O L Art of C mm -mm, C O O L Art of Cool. Okay. Um, so I I um, I usually volunteer a lot of time for that. Um, okay. Hold on, let me go back. Black August in the Park also has um, a Thanksgiving um, type setting um, event called Black Market, um, and that's okay. when they that's when we take all the vendors. So not just the food trucks that are you know highlighted during Black August in the Park, but we also take Black vendors that um, from I mean and these these are these can be national. These are not just local. Um, okay. And we offer basically a shopping experience for the Durham community okay. um, for folks to come out, get their gifts. Um, again, all black vendors. Um, so okay. that's called Black Market. That's that is closer to Thanksgiving. That's closer to Thanksgiving. Um, and then Black like, August in the Park has also been. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. No, I'm definitely going to have to tell you that too. Because I'm now that I'm thinking about it because it's expanded so much. Um, right. <laughs> it's also we also now do a um, black market um, farmers market now where oh, we wow. highlight okay. local f uh, black farmers like yeah, it's crazy awesome. like oh, these founders <laughs> look these founders these founders are not playing here okay not um, playing. Yeah. and then I'm trying to I don't I know I do so much oh yes another hip-hop local festival called um, beats and bars I'm involved with that that okay. happens in September um, okay. That has actually grown now too. It used to just be local and local hip hop artists, and now that has increased. It's we've wow. had national artists come in, and I think that's going to be in year five or four this year. So, um, okay. yeah. Well, there's still share those links with us <laughs> so that we can check those out because those sound mm -hmm. like when you talk jazz, you're talking my language. I love jazz and I love to eat. So wherever there's going to be food trucks, I love to be there. <laughs> So, ma'am, I wish I had met you earlier in the summer because one of the um, founders of Art of Cool, El Strong, he has a residency on on the roof of um, the Durham, the Durham Hotel, which is downtown. Oh, and he did, wow. a he, did, he did a residency every Thursday. Um, oh. where he would have a, and he would have a jam session where he would call all of his musician friends and it, you never know who was going to show up. So it was a different show right. literally every single wow. like, that time. sounds amazing I would and then love they that. teach they teach a summer course they teach a summer course to the kids called the start of cool like it, th these founders are That's absolutely and their business like their business sense is like are ridiculous they're absolutely amazing mm -hmm. um so yeah it's you, expanded expanded and expanded mm -hmm. are you a musician yourself because it sounds like you're I into would. a lot of music. I would. <laughs> So, so what? So what Miss Raven had to learn to do was to 
put down certain things and let other okay. facets of her personality because literally if not i would be sitting here looking at you like i need 48 hour days a friend of mine released an album called 26 hour days i don't need 26 hour you days need i literally need 48 if i <laughs> If I dallied in every single thing that I was interested in, Tiffany, I would yeah. literally, uh, yeah. So, yeah. I I'm used to sure play the piano. I'm sure that everybody listening will <laughs> agree with me that there are not I enough don't... hours in a day. Literally. Not literally. enough hours. So, I did. So, I, mean, I played the piano. I played the piano for 11 years. Oh, wow. See, I, I've never even, I might hit the keys, but that's about it. I, I really wish that that's something that I would have done um, when I was in grade school is do an instrument. And I, I did not. I don't, I don't know why I didn't. I was in the writing clubs and the newspaper. Because you were and all writing that kind of and doing newspaper. Was, and you probably did your book because your book usually accompanied new C. I did. You were doing that. <laughs> But I wish I would have done an instrument, you know? Yeah. But um, okay, so with your teaching, mm -hmm. um, school's about to start. What is the one thing that you wish all parents would do before by the first day of class with their kids? By the first day of class. Yes. I hope that because usually schools have some type of welcome back night, some type of meet the you know, teachers night. I would get proficient with your teachers i would get proficient with whatever um referral and or student support is mm -hmm. um is in your school and know their names and know their names okay. and know their faces um and then just being as supportive as possible i think that sometimes you know um i'm dropping stuff i'm sorry <laughs> oh no i you you're mommy you're okay, be, you're yeah. being a mom so you yeah i get that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i saw those mom looks i knew what was going on you um, saw me like no stop i'm doing so, something oh, no, no. <laughs> I saw, oh i saw i saw i was like mm -hmm. <laughs> you, saw, um, you saw the mom yeah no Good. i did you know, make sure that you are familiar with your son's daughter's PLCs. PLCs are those professional learning communities, and they're mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. just a new word for the teaching community that's in um, your school. Because a lot of times mm -hmm. in these schools, third graders have there's three or four classrooms of third graders. There's two or yes. three classes of fourth graders. So know all okay. of those parties. I would say know your um, administrative staff. So know who is mm -hmm. sitting at that front desk, respect them. There's a lot of things that move through that school that happen with that admin staff that you wouldn't think. So the nicer and the more that you know them and they, and them know you, the, the things, right. certain things will flow. Um, just become aware of the community that you're now participating in. Right. Um, right. And then just prepare your kids like we're gonna have a great year. We're mm -hmm. going to learn, like, literally just start getting that into their heads that this is going to be a great year. Learning is fun. Um, it's going to be a great right. year, and learning is fun. And, you know, whatever we right. need to do to make those things so, we're going, going to do them, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then let them sleep. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Please start. Like, mine are about to go to bed right now. <laughs> no, they're not. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. We're about to pack these book bags up, and we are getting showers and is going to bed. Facts. Immediately. Facts. <laughs> and then also being, care being careful of their diet. So let's start pulling back maybe on some of that sugar that we've been having, especially that white processed sugar. Let's start, mm -hmm. <laughs> let's start thinking maybe in transitioning into fruits and vegetables. Um, maybe even incorporating like a little quiet time. It's, you know, so 15 minutes, half an hour before bedtime. Okay. We're going to turn right. off the phones. We're going to turn off these TVs, these tablets. I like it. And I like just, it. let's just have some quiet time. Cause that's actually starting to build that mindfulness component into everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also kind of give them a place to remind them to go to when they're in school too, because sometimes school gets, does get crazy, but if they already have right. kind of like these mechanisms that they've already built in, which is also something I forgot to say that I'm going to be doing in my boot camp. I'm going to just have these moments where we just say, you know, what if we're in school and things are a little crazy and things are a little loud? What do we do so that we don't become part of that crazy? What does that look like? 
Does okay. it look like maybe we need to be writing? Does it look like maybe we need to go and draw? Does that look like maybe we need to go and find the cozy corner in the, you know, in the reading center and kind of just chill out? Um, so, so if you start incorporating those things at home, they'll become seamless when they're in the classroom, if that makes sense. Right. right. And then, so I'm by really glad that you. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Fina. Um, I'm really glad that you're into mindfulness. I actually did a live this morning and I was talking about um, my professor at my master's I residency. Um, <laughs> yeah, she did mindfulness techniques with us every morning that we got into class and then right after lunch before we started with our afternoon. And I loved it. Um, right. It was something that I was interested in before. But now I've actually decided that that's going to be something I'm going to incorporate um, as I a mental saw. health counselor. So I'm really happy. I saw, and, to I, see and I applaud you, you for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I think it was so helpful in getting our minds ready for class. Um, so I definitely can see the benefits of doing it in the classroom as well. Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. Um, so and I that's, really. My interest that. came to that. Thank you. My um my interest in that came from my own yoga practice that basically saved my life. And so mm -hmm. <laughs> and then it just mm -hmm. so happened that it was at the height of this kind of, you know, there was this kind of mindfulness wave. Um I don't know if you've been reading about the right. studies about um what has happened in the schools and school districts that have started incorporating yoga and meditation um as mindfulness inside of their classrooms. Um mm -hmm. and they've had really good success. And good, I good. think that I mindfulness is a really good way. Yeah, no, I, and I think I have some, I have some articles that I can send you to um, that will help with that okay. because that's, those are the kind of like the, the guides that I've been kind of using in terms of making up my own curriculum. At this point right now, what I'm trying to do is build curriculum. I wanna build curriculum, build okay. curriculum, so that not only can I help advocate for parents, but I can also help advocate for other teachers. Um, mm -hmm. And also just, you know, help that way as well as being a, kind of an advocate for those parties because sometimes we forget about those parties. You know, um, education right. is literally a community. It's, you know, the child, it's your student, but it's also teachers and whatever is happening with the teachers and affects that learning as well. So um, yeah. Yeah. What, what I would, no, seriously, I literally would love to, um, so that, that's the other thing that I'm working on too is building a lot of curriculum that I can start releasing as kind of like online portals um, for okay. teacher support, for teacher support, for parent support, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that if I finally ever were to finish writing my ding on acceptance <laughs> you see my face right if that yeah, ever gets if that ever gets turned in i believe <laughs> there's a lot <laughs> there's a lot and and what's so crazy about that is that i've pulled back from a lot of things too so mm -hmm. you don't you don't see me everywhere because i've been trying to get very directed about centers <laughs> ma'am <laughs> good we have to prioritize <laughs> facts so I just read this meme the other day that I am living by now, but it says um, givers always have to set the boundaries because takers never will. And so that, that was a gospel. So I, right. I've had to literally go through and start putting boundaries on. This is what this day looks like. This is what this week is going to look like. This yeah. is what this month yeah. is going to look like. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I've had to pull back on a lot of things and let them go with love. But, um, yeah, my, my, my focus this year is if I could release two or three portals or online portals that would help support teachers, help support parents, and then, of course, continue – um, working with students in terms of literacy development, um, that would be great for personal, personal, professional um, goals setting, I guess would be great. Um, and right. then not lose my mind and within all that and still get on the floor and do a handstand every night. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like good things. Sounds like good things. Well, yeah. I really appreciate you um, coming on live with us um, and you. sharing so your journey as a teacher. Um, I really, really think the boot camp that you're doing is going to be awesome for your Thank kids. You. 
And maybe that's something that you can teach other teachers to do because I know that it's definitely, definitely needed. Um, I know as a former teacher myself um, that those are some things that I would have liked to have done with my students before, you know, before classes started is to go ahead and get them going so that when they start the first day, they are ready to go. So I think that is amazing what you were doing during the boot camp before they officially started. Thank, Thank you for you that so feedback. Much. Thank you for having Thank me on. This was awesome. I appreciate everything that oh, you're doing cool. and the efforts that you're doing in your your um, practicum and all that. Like, girl, we Thank doing stuff you. and raising a family. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I have two. My babies are going to middle school. <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> Yeah, so I um I decided I stopped doing teaching last year and now I'm actually in the counseling field so I'm very happy with that. I got really burned out teaching. So how do you Mayama. avoid how do you keep yourself from getting burned out? Shish, what do you do? Okay, so I'm gonna give you two things. The first thing is that sometimes I don't. Sometimes I actually do get burned out and life has to mm-hmm. knock me down and say, Take care of yourself. So let's be right. honest. Let's be let's be transparent. Let's do that, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So there's that. Um, and then and when I'm rebuilding, which is what I'm doing now, um, I, like I said, I have to prioritize. I have to literally sit and say, so what's going to be our focus for this week? Right. What's going to be our focus for this month? What's going to be our focus for this quarter? Okay. <laughs> like literally. And, and, and if I do it, and especially if we do it by quarter and by terms, mm-hmm. um, breaking those down into kind of, you know, sprints, um, makes things very much more doable. Like, again, I'm so happy you can't see my desk. Um, I, I, will not show you my, I will not show you my post-it wall right now because it is not complete. But I'm, 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 ma'am. But I had, to, I, had to, I had to have a better way. I had to incorporate a better system because I'm like, Raven, we can't do this. We can't right. have this couch be looking like this. <laughs> we can't, right? So now I've incorporated certain walls as my post-it walls, and I literally okay. sprint on my walls. In fact, I will show you this because this okay. has helped me. If I can, if I can turn my camera, can I? Can, I can't turn my camera, so I'll give you a selfie. So you'll see okay. that this is kind of like so. Every day right now is on a post-it note, so I'm writing the date so I can actually see it, and then I lay it okay. out by week, and I sit and I look and I go, okay. So Tuesday is kind of a calm day. Wednesday is kind of a calm day. Thursday is not. Right. So what are we? What, <laughs> so what are we going to be doing? What are we going to be doing Tuesday and Wednesday that can help alleviate some of that stress from Thursday? So what that looks like is that tomorrow I'm going to have to food prep if I want to have my detox water, which is what I was drinking while I was on with you. Okay. I have to make sure that, you know, the meals are already there so that I'm not running around looking crazy on Thursday and then that I'm the best practitioner that I can absolutely be, right? Alkaline water. Okay. I see. So you're planning ahead. You're eating healthy. What else are you doing? Um, (laughs) I'm actually going back into the gym. Okay. So, hey there. I see you in the back. Hello. (laughs) Um, I'm I'm trying to build up... um, my um, exercise regimen again. Okay. So that, that includes cardio. That includes um, weight, um, some weight resistance training. Now, see, just talking about cardio, that would burn me out. By, by, Ma'am. <laughs> I need to, to exercise more, but that's clear. By the time I get off work, I am to too me. burnt out to go to the gym. So what I <laughs> what I found out about that because those of us who have longer days, what I found out is that either I have to do it in the middle of the day before mm-hmm. I'm completely burnt out, or I have to do it in the morning. I am okay. not a morning person. Okay, it takes yep. Miss Raven about an hour and a half to actually officially wake up. Like I can be up looking at you, <laughs> but the click the click in my brain yeah. doesn't happen until about a, an hour later. But I have found that I can do some meditation in the morning, maybe okay. some journaling, and then definitely incorporating in terms of those blocks, those um, planning blocks. Take 15 okay. minutes and walk around. Just walk around. Just get some steps I like in. Um, I like it. I've, and I've learned, like, on, especially if you go to Instagram, Instagram is great for this, um, yoga practices that you can do in five and 10 minutes. Okay. Literally. Like and, and, and planking that you can do. You can just sit in your, I can go and I can lock the door and the teacher Workroom and go and plank. 
for five minutes. Okay, so you're That's really, awesome. really good on, med- on meditation and mindfulness. Definitely, I can tell. Okay, awesome. Yeah, no, no it's huge. It's huge. That's okay. literally the only way that I can keep myself from being an actual human. And okay. Work. <laughs> okay. I mean, trans- I mean, transparency, right? Like, yeah. I know who I am. I know how I can get. So, <laughs> so if I don't take care of those things that, you know, help make me me, I, I won't. I won't be that person. And, you know, something that I feel I've had people tell me and remind me of that I think I can share with you is that, you know, the world needs us. The world needs right. exactly who you are yes. at your best, at your most optimized, right? Right. And, and you can't because there's, there's, ma'am, and there's work <laughs> that only you can do in this world. So if you're not around to do it, or if you're not in the right mindset to do it, who's going to do it? Ma'am, I love it. that is a whole incomplete word. My gosh. So, <laughs> right, like, <laughs> if I got to drink this alkaline water, Tiffany, I'm going to have to drink it. If I got to make this detox water, we got to drink it. If I got to decide right. to have these cucumbers over these french fries, I got to do it. You know what I'm saying? Because the world needs us. They really, truly do. Yeah. So, I definitely appreciate you being on. Um, you just gave us some amazing feedback on how to um, avoid burnout. You told us about your boot camp that you're doing the next two weeks. Um, you've, let, you've given mm-hmm. us some insight and some really, really good events and some good cultural things going on in the community. So you are doing big things, and yeah. I'm so happy that you took out some time to talk to us on the Speak Up and Inspire series. So we're going to go it ahead and It was my time. pleasure. I am so yes. happy to finally you. meet you. Thank you for starting Thank off you. our Inspirational Teacher Month. And I will definitely be I looking for those that. links from you and anything you want to share that we talked about. And I will make sure that I get them out there into the into the world um, with our followers and our fans. Miss Tiffany, thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank you for for everything that you're studying to be a better practitioner. Thank you for thank raising you responsible socially responsible folk i appreciate that <laughs> i mean that's a that's a reality let's let's again yeah. miss raven is transparent when i'm t- when i'm talking yes, I'm transparent. Transparent. <laughs> so so thank you yeah. so thank you for all thank that you, you are doing and thank you for all your efforts with your organization thank you for having this series um thank you for thank this you. month highlighting teachers so thank you thank you thank you as well Thank you for all of that. Thank I appreciate you. you and your efforts. Thank you so much. I definitely would like for you to check in with me. And if you have anything big going on, please let me know so that we can shout you out and share it. I will do so. Thank you so much for that. And you also, this is this Thank is definitely you. a mutual, a mutual street here that we're walking on. So anything you need me to blast out, let me know. All right, well, I will be in Raleigh this weekend, so I might hit you up and see what you're doing so we can meet in person. (laughs) Ma'am. We we will talk offline. We will talk offline because I'll have you running the entire time. Why didn't you tell me my face was this shiny? Like, I moisturized before I got on this show? Good gosh. Child, please. I just saw a a whole shine right there. My gosh. I know that that has been shining. Like a flashlight the whole podcast, my gosh. I did not see any flashlights on your face. But I was too worried about trying to keep the, keep the camera still in the car. So. Facts. Facts. Yeah. But no, well, thank, thank you, you so thank much. And please hearing. hit me up. Hit me up so we can. But, but yes. look, I'll have you running all weekend. So just you tell me, no, yeah, Raven, I will meet you at one <laughs> thing, Raven. One. One. So thank you. Right. She said like, you can pick one. But yes, there's stuff going on. So let thank me know. You so much. Thank you so much, Miss Raven. Thank you for thank having you, me. Thank you, y'all. We will talk soon because I'll be there this Please. weekend. Please. Offline right. though. Offline. Not affiliated with Miss Raven. Offline. Gotcha. Gotcha. Have Remember, a good off night. or off. You do the same. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh my gosh.